On this episode of Game Shack, it's my one year review of the ALU. Coming up next. Hey everybody, it's JDV here for EvilGeniusEntertainment.com. Thank you for stopping by the Game Shack, the world's smallest and coldest arcade. So I thought I would do my one year review of owning an ALU just in case you were on the fence about buying one or if you're thinking about jumping into the three quarter scale arcade hobby. Long story short, uh, if you don't want to wait till the end of the review, I'm going to just put it to you this way. It remains the best multi cade game that you can buy in the business. And in my opinion, if you were going to start a home arcade, you probably should look at the ALU as being your first cab. And there are a whole lot of reasons for that. Number one, let's get right off the bat, is toughness. I've owned this game now for about a year, maybe 13 months. I've owned it a long time. I've played it almost every single night during that time. Uh, my buddy Warpig comes over on Fridays and we play Street Fighter and we get, you know, we have a few adult beverages and we talk a lot of smack to each other. And we do not take it easy on the game. We are very, like, we shake the game around, get mad. I have hit the game in frustration. And the bottom line is, it has worked flawlessly. It is a remarkably tough machine. It's made out of the same basic materials as you're going to see in an arcade one-up type build. A little less thick MDF than you'll have in the iArcade. Uh, but the, it's just physically a big tough machine and if you're someone like me who does not take it easy on the things that they own that is important speaking of big it has the biggest screen in the market segment it is 24 inches across diagonally and it is set up on a horizontal type build so it really is a very nice very big screen and that control deck is equally big it is 10 and a half inches wider than your standard control deck on an arcade one up it's about 10 inches wider than the uh, arcade so what does that mean in, in, in real world use well in real world use it means that two grown adult men who weigh over 200 pounds each can comfortably sit at this game and either play those high scrolling beat-em-ups together cooperatively or beat hell out of each other when they're playing competitively in fighting games. And that is a huge advantage over all of the other games that are on the market right now, everything from Arcade 1UP, the stuff from iArcade, a lot of homebrew builds. The fact is that the big deck and the big screen give this thing a huge advantage. And also, yeah, it's got real nice sound to boot. Of course, you can add, I think, three different styles of marquees to this thing. So if you don't love the way the marquee looks, you can change that too. In terms of its height, it is actually a little shorter than the iArcade and it's taller than most arcade one-ups. I built a four inch riser for mine. You can see the video on that over there. And so that kind of helps. But again, depending on how tall you are, I'm 6'1". You may be just comfortable or just fine with it being exactly the way it is. Anyway, the build quality, the size of the screen, the size of the control deck, the type of controllers on there, including on mine that has two spinners and a trackball. Now that might vary on what you get on some new builds for the 1.1 you have the pinball controllers on the side as well. Uh, one note before I move on past build quality, unlike their mini, you cannot flip the screen to vertical and that is important and I'll talk about that next. If you are really into vertical games, then maybe this machine is not as impressive to you. And I think really if you're gonna be playing a game like Galaga, Galaxian, uh, that, you know, Space Invaders, that type of game, or games like Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, then maybe you wanna look at branded cabs from Arcade 1UP, or, well, you can't get those games on our arcade, so maybe you do your own kind of homebrew that has a 20 inch Dell, that'll just give you a little bit more of that vertical experience. Of course, you can do Coin Ops X on the Alp to get the same thing, but the reality is when you're playing a vertical game on the ALU, it's about a foot. So it's not a tiny little screen, but it's nowhere near the 17 inch screen that you're gonna find on those arcade one-ups. If you want to play Pac-Man, Galaga, Galaxian, you know, any type vertical type game, is gonna be a better experience on 
the dedicated machines for those, okay? So I'll say that, but for every other game, from Jowls to Street Fighter to Mortal Kombat to any kind of side-scrolling beat-em-up, this is definitely going to be the superior experience in terms of its screen size. And the screen itself is you know, very vibrant and looks great. And in the menu setting, you can change it from pixel perfect to a little bit wider to a little bit wider still. So you do have some control over the aspect ratio of it. So for me, the, the dimensions of the game, the, the size, the control deck, and screen are really super important to me. But that's not the only major advantage it has over the arcade and most of the stuff that comes out from arcade one up it also comes included depending on what version you have 300 plus games come already included and that dwarfs every other competitor the i think 11 games come with the i arcade and i think the most games that have ever been put out on an arcade one up are 14 and that's only on two or three cabs at this point so in terms of sheer number of native games you plug in the machine you know you put the machine together which isn't hard by the way and you plug it in and you turn it on and you have instant access to 300 games no must no fuss now <laughs> they're not all good there are some stinkers in there to be sure although some one man stinker is another man's classic nostalgia so again depending on what, on what you want take a look at the game list for the exact machine you're going to buy but reality is it does have some amazingly great a-list game it has tempest it has asteroids asteroids deluxe um astronax was great time burger time is a fantastic game centipede millipede fix it felix it has tetris tron three of the Ge sega genesis star wars games missile command i mean it has a lot of great games if you're a fan of 80s era games or of ColecoVision or Atari 2600, then this is a very impressive system, just even if it didn't get on the internet, even if you couldn't add any more games to it, it's still probably worth it in my mind just for the games that I mentioned. But the reality is you can add games. All right, so the first way you can add games is by using something like the At Games Blast dongle. This one's, an, uh, I has, think it has Activision games like 20 or you can use something like this legends flashback and this either comes with 50 games or 100 to 110 depending on what version you buy all right so why would you want to buy these well what's cool about these um, is that they hook directly up in here into the hdmi and usb ports uh, if you're unfamiliar with the alu that is again one of the things that separates it from the i arcade or the um, arcade one-up games is that you have inputs in the very front of the machine that'll take an HDMI and it will take a USB. And what you do is you get, you get a little HDMI cord, a little small USB cord, and you can plug directly into this and have it powered up by the machine itself. On top of that, all of the games that are on this flashback are already uh, coordinated to the controller stick and the button which means you don't have to map anything it's already pre-mapped so this little guy on and this one it has some um, ghosts and goblins uh, it has a street fighter on here it has a few uh, a few other games that i really really love that aren't already on the legends ultimate this is a way to play it same thing with this so this has got i think 20 activision games you just plug it. This itself is an HDMI little thing there. I don't know if that's showing up or not, but that's an HDMI uh, input. You just put that right in there, hook up a small USB, and now you're playing one of their, I think they have five or six of these blast dongles. And there are various different kinds you can get, Activision games. I think there's some a Namco version, which I think has Nintendo Pac-Man on there, but a pretty decent version of Pac-Man on there. So there are, in other words, there are ways to play licensed video games from at games that will plug directly into the front of the machine and those games are all properly mapped out to the buttons and joystick which makes it again a very easy plug and play. The only real bummer on it is the fact that the Legends flashback is kind of set up I, I don't know the aspect ratio is a little smaller on this so and you, you can't change the aspect ratio of this using the alp or this thing itself but what's crazy is that let's say you're playing street fighter off of this on here 
is that it still ends up being a 17 inch diagonal screen. So even though you can't control the aspect ratio, it still ends up being the same size as the arcade one up version, which to me is a trip. So, I mean, you can pick these up for $35, bam, and you're playing Street Fighter that looks just as good as anything that arcade one up has already pre-mapped out to the far superior controller deck. But of course, it's not those at games add-ons like the Blast Dongle and Flashback that people really love about this system. It is Coin Ops X. Now, Coin Ops X is a fan-based homebrew type of thing, which essentially allows you to play a whole bunch of different games using your ALU. Assuming you have your USB properly imaged with whatever games you have, you let your um, AL, you know that you want to play a Coin Ops X game. It goes through a little bit of rigmarole. And once you kind of learn the uh, UI of the ALU, more on that in a second, it lets you go ahead and have access to those games. You can either just use the kind of the simple menu, which is what I use, but there are all kinds of good front ends now that most of them involve a spinning wheel. That looks really good, um, but it, you can really have whatever it is that you want and build whatever you want. So you could have one that just has vertical stuff or horizontal or Sega Genesis games or whatever. So you can kind of make these things whatever you want. Now there are three potential negatives about using Corian Ops X is one, it's not quite as plug and play as the other things I've said. A second issue is the fact that after every five games, every time, five uses of CoinOpsX, it makes you reconnect to the at game server. You have to put in your email and your password and kind of let them know you're still alive. They'll re-spin it back up to five and then you can play it five more times. And the number three reason why yeah, maybe you don't want to use CoinOpsX is because they're not licensed. And take that as it will for good or for bad. It's up to you. No matter how you slice it, the ALU has the most amount of flexibility of any game system going right now. Uh, you can use the flashback, you can have the dongle, you can use at games own online service, you have uh, Coin Ops X, and heck, now you even have Fightcade. So where you can play the fighting games or really any game that allows two or more players, you can play it live now using your ALU. Now, again, this is kind of a pain in the butt and not, not something that you would want to use if you just kind of like plug and play type player like I kind of am. But the fact remains is that people are committed to the system, to the lifestyle, so to speak, of the ALU. Okay, what about some negatives real quick? Well, you know, you only have the 12 inches for vertical games. And while that's okay, it is not anywhere near good as the 17 inch arcade one up version. In my mind, it is the vertical games that arcade one up still absolutely dominates the market in. Um, if you want something like Pac-Man, Galaga, Galaxian, Space Invaders, any game like that, then in my opinion, arcade one up is probably going to be a better choice than the ALU. One other note about that, because these joysticks are set up as eight way joysticks, you know, to be able to play the most amount of games. The fact is it's very, very hard to play a game like Pac-Man on here. The joysticks do not correspond very well to them. Yes, you can put a four way gate on there, but A, that's not super easy to do. I mean, you can take all of this apart, but it's not easy. And B, I don't want to mess with all that. I want to be able to play Street Fighter on here. I have to give up the fact that I can play Pac-Man on this machine because you really can't. So if you're looking at Pac-Man, game like that, then Arcade 1UP definitely has the advantage. And the fact that they have things like Big Blue where you can play not only Street Fighter, but you can play it live against an opponent, that is something that this really can't do unless you use something like the Fightcade, which is probably going to be on what most people are willing to do. Now, if you are looking at the iArcade, um, honestly, the only reason why I would look at the iArcade now is either you can find it for a very good price or because you, you love the games that it has that it can't really duplicate elsewhere. You can play Space Ace and Dragon's Lair using MAME on this machine with CoinOps X, but it's not a pleasant experience. It doesn't look great. The sounds are off. It doesn't have any on-screen help. That is where the IRK definitely dominates as any kind of Daphne game. And of course, they get new games that take advantage of the better CPU in the iArcade, games like Dead Cells, uh, you know, new games 
um, games that you're not going to see maybe even on a coin ops expo all right so that's it uh, there's a few negatives but by and large they're vastly outweighed by all of the positives which includes price i think this is going to be on sale for 600 something dollars over at nod 2022 you can find them brand new for 550 i think at sam's club sometimes i mean so they're very affordable especially when you're talking about a game like terminator 2 where you're getting one game for 700 dollars I mean, if you're just getting into the hobby or don't have a lot of money to spend, I mean, this is the game for you. Lastly, I'm going to say this. I think the guys over there uh, do a great job. Um, the customer service to me is, has been absolutely top notch. Any problem I've had, they've immediately tried to deal with it. And a lot of uh, people who come to this channel will say the same thing. Some people have had negative um, interactions. I, I know that. But I do think that they're working to make the best company they can have the best experience for us, the retro game fans. So anyway, it's a big thumbs up after one year. Absolutely recommend it. All right, if you like this kind of content, please give me a thumbs up on the way out the door. It really does help the channel. Love each other. And until next time, I'll see you guys in the Game Shack. Mwah! Be sure to visit EvilGeniusEntertainment.com for exclusive content, swag, casting call news, and much, much more.